Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel, The Cutest Little Thing, Upcycle with Andrea. I am Andrea and I thank you so much for hopping on to watch this video. If you enjoy it, I hope that you will consider giving me a like and even share it out with a friend who you think will like it too. If you love thrift flips and upcycling and home decor, DIYs and all of that, I hope that you will hit that notifications bell where you don't miss any future videos. For this project, I grabbed this wooden stand that I had in my stash. It has this little candle holder. I think someone had previously glued that on to there and I couldn't get it off. So I just went in with the color plaster in the Waverly and I just painted the entire piece I also had a little bowl of water I kept dipping my brush in just to give it more of a washed look and where my paint wouldn't be quite so thick. I completely covered the stand. I ended up doing two coats. I could also see a little bleed through after I did that first coat, so I went in and sprayed some shellac over the entire piece. And what that does, that just helps with any bleed through. And after that, I was good to go, no more bleed through. I have this foam pumpkin. It's a large pumpkin. I chalk painted white. I'm going in the bottom and just cutting a little section out of that pumpkin just where it will slide over that little candle holder piece that was glued onto my wooden stand since I couldn't get that off. I figured that would kind of help secure my pumpkin onto the stand with it being on there and kind of helping it hold it secure and stable. So for that reason, I liked it there. And I just placed it right on there and made sure it was good and centered and all of that. I then went in with some embellishments. I have this eucalyptus garland. I just wrapped around the base of it. I sort of tied it and hooked it together and then I secured it with some hot glue where it would stay in place. And there's the stem that was on the pumpkin and I just um, took it off. It was a little loose, so I put some hot glue to hold it in place where it wouldn't fall off. I had these leaves in my stash. It came off of a floral pick and I thought that they would go perfect with this piece since I was trying to kind of use neutral colors. And it just stuck right into that foam pumpkin. I did trim it off just a little bit with my wire cutters because it was a little long. I didn't quite need it so long. And there was already a little hole there in that pumpkin. So I just stuck it right back into that hole, adjusted those leaves. And I did end up adding some Spanish moss around that stem as well, but I don't think I got that part on video. These were some cute little floral picks I got, let's see, I believe these came from Timu actually. And I just clipped those stems because they were longer with my wire cutters. And I just kind of went every couple of inches and placed these flowers. They almost, they could pass as mums. Um but I'm not sure if that's what they were meant to be, but they look like a, a mum flower to me. I do end up going back and hot gluing all of these um, pieces that I'm putting in. I just like to kind of play around with it and place them first just to make sure I like the look, and then I'll go back with hot glue and um, floral picks and things like that to hold everything secure. Now these fern greenery pieces I ordered from Amazon, and I will try to link everything in the description below. 
but I really like these because you can adjust each piece. I, there's like three firm pieces on each pick, and you can just kind of adjust each one how you need it to lay in your arrangement. And so I just went in with a few of these just to give it a little more length in some places. And I just kind of stuck those all around, adjusting those leaves, just getting everything in place. I hope you guys aren't getting bored with these. I know I've done several of these pumpkin cloches and pumpkin on a stand and things like that. But I just had so many things like this in my stash, and these were selling really well in my booth. That I have so I just kept um, making these and I just wanted to share each one that I made with you guys because they were each a little different a little you know unique in their own way different colors and things like that so I just wanted to share them all with you guys I hope you aren't getting bored with them And I just kept placing um, those firm pieces around, just making sure I like the look of everything. And like I said, I went back with my hot glue and secured everything where it wouldn't fall out. And there is our finished product, you guys. Let me know what you think. I have these three glass, they're sort of like candle holders that I had in my stash. Two are frosted and one just has a painted design. I took them outside and spray painted them with black spray paint just to prime them. And now I'm just going in with my gray chalk paint is the color Steel in the Waverly. And I am just going to do one full coat on these. I have made several of these similar to this project. Um, they all sold really well for me in my booth. And today I just wanted to make some for my own personal use to go on my candlesticks that are on my mantle. I decided to do a crackling technique. You saw me pause there, I was thinking. So after that gray chalk paint dried, I went in with some Mod Podge and I just coated all three of these really well. And I let that dry. And you just wanna give it a good coat of that Mod Podge. It seems like the more you use, the better your crackle will be. And you can also use Elmer's glue for that part as well. So now I'm going in with the color Celery, also in the Waverly, and that is just a pretty green. I love the color Celery. I think it is so pretty, and I have loved it this fall using it in my projects and crafts and things. And I just coated that really well. I love how this one had that design. It makes it look even more like a pumpkin. If you haven't guessed already, we're turning these into little mini pumpkins. I just love these. I think they are so cute. And these glass cloach type things or candle holders, tea light holders, they're easy to find in your thrift store. And I think you can even grab them up at Dollar Tree. I just went in my yard and got me some sticks, some little branches that had fallen. And I just cut them to... A uh, little stem shape and I love these because they had some type of moss growing on them and that made them so pretty I just love things like that it just looks more uh, rustic and just gives it a more realistic feel and I just hot glued those on the top for the little stems then I went in and hot glued some Spanish moss and put around those stems You could also use reindeer moss for this. 
Now I'm just going in and making a bow. I've got some raffia there. I've got some different uh, ribbon strips cut. And I've just got them cut the lengths that I want and just tied it all together <laughs> together with some jute string. Just double knot it in the back to be sure it's good and secure. You want it good and tight so it's not going to be moving around anywhere. I put a dab of hot glue there and put a cute little button. I get those buttons off of Amazon. I will link that in the description below. And then I first I, um, I tied my jute string around my stem and I did end up going back with some hot glue just to secure those in place and I just made a bow for each one and I just wanted to use the neutral colors for my bow so that's why I chose the burlap and the raffia and then the brown color buttons and that just matches my house really well and you can use whatever colors these are so cute the possibilities are endless with these there I had some little burlap leaves in my stash and um, I thought about gluing those on the top but I decided it didn't need those and look how gorgeous these are to put them on your candlesticks for the fall season I absolutely loved how these turned out and how they match and go with my other decor because of course I've been using the color celery and then I have the other brown tones on my mantle and then some blue tones and then the burlap pumpkins there. So everything just went together beautifully. Let me know what you think of these and thanks for watching. Okay guys, back in the summer, I tore down an old fence panel in my backyard and I have just been using that wood for my projects. So here I am just sawing my wood in little squares to make fall ornaments. Now we're going to go in and paint some of our wood pieces. I am going to be leaving some of them the natural stain. I'm going to be using the color pumpkin and the color celery all in the Waverly. I may also use the color agave, which is a blue color. I still like blue in the fall. I think it pairs well with the orange and the green and then definitely the natural wood tones. So I'm going in with this paint. I'm not doing full coverage. I'm doing a very thin coat. I want these to look rustic, so they're kind of going to be sort of undone. It's going to almost look unfinished. Almost like a wood wash or paint wash technique. Now that we got our wood pieces painted and they're good and dry, I'm going in with some Mod Podge to get these labels decoupaged onto our wood pieces. I'm just applying that. Mod Podge onto the back of the label, just doing a good even coat, making sure you get the edges and the corners really well so that it will adhere to the wood like it should. I did do a straight edge where I cut these labels out. I just used my scissors. Sometimes I will do a feathering technique, but I just went ahead and cut these out with the scissors. And I'm like how that I'm liking how that is looking. So I'm just going to do the rest just like this. Now that we have all of our labels decoupaged onto our wood pieces, I'm just going in and making little bows for each of them. I just have, I have some ribbon from Amazon and I also have just some, um, I think I thrifted like a sheet and just uh, cut it into strips and I'm just going in and crisscrossing those ribbons and fabrics and just making a small bow. I don't want anything too big for these pieces. I don't want it to, um, you know, be too overwhelming for the little ornaments. So I'm not making them too big and I'm just tying them all up with a jute string, cutting off the excess and hot gluing those in the corners. And I also added a little jute string to hang. And here they are guys. Look how cute these turned out. 
I absolutely love these. I love the little images that were purchased off of the Etsy shop. I will include that in the description below. And some of the bows, I added a half bead and some I added a little pine cone and some I just left plain. But I think these are the cutest little thing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I hope you all have a blessed day.